Hey there Poetry Pals, welcome back to another video. This week I am going to tell you how to turn a poem into a sonnet. I've written another poem for you. And I'm not sorry because I feel like today needed one. Like we needed one. I know we've been through some shit and I'm sure there's more to come. But we have our galoshes, wellies and anoraks and with your hand in mine, I'll keep waiting if you will. I want to spend every day with you. Stare each day down and dance through it all. I promise to build you fires and make you cups of tea that you'll forget to drink. I promise to keep writing poems about you but never the breakup kind because I want to grow old but never grow up with you. It is a well-known tradition that the man ask the woman but we've never been defined by what's past and I'm tired of waiting to be asked. I know we can't afford it and it's not February 29th and I know that ultimately it is archaic and no longer relevant, but I don't care. I love you. And I'm asking anyway. I've already made a couple of videos on sonnets, one about the history of sonnets and one about how to write one yourself. I've also done videos on how to write poems and how to edit poems. I will link all of them in the description below because having watched those will definitely help you with this process. But one of the things I learned while I was doing my dissertation for my undergrad so many years ago was that actually one of the cool things that you can do is take a poem that you've written uh, for another purpose, maybe it's a more performancey poem, and turning it into a sonnet. So one of the reasons I've decided to come back to sonnets is that I've had a lot, a couple of comments from uh, kids in schools who aren't in schools right now, um, who are clearly writing sonnets for some sort of homework, uh, and they found the videos useful. So I thought I'd come back to show how you can turn one of your already existing poems into a sonnet. I hope you find this video useful, guys. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is go briefly over what makes a sonnet a sonnet and um, yeah, the brief rules about it and which type of sonnet I'm going to be turning my poem into today. It is worth saying on these rules about sonnets is that these are all generally, um, I have read many a sonnet that breaks one or more of these rules, but here is generally what makes a sonnet a sonnet. Sonnets are traditionally about unrequited love. They are also normally 14 lines long. However, one of my favourite sonnet collections breaks both of these rules. It is called Modern Love by George Meredith and it was written about the breakdown of his marriage and they are 16 lines long. I argued in my dissertation that those extra two lines um, is what happens after the traditional love at first sight um, unrequited love thing. Your marriage breaks down. <laughs> anyway, back to the rules that make a sonnet a sonnet. They generally have a regular rhyme scheme um, and a certain structure. There is a turn after the eighth line and generally each line is in iambic pentameter. Josie. Yes, Josie. What's iambic pentameter? So glad you asked, gal. It is um, a meter, which is the stressed and unstressed syllables. Um, so generally poetry does have a rhythm to it and the rhythm is made up of um, feet. An iambic pentameter is five iams. An iam is an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. Most satisfactorily, most satisfactorily, satisfactory. It is satisfying that an I am is an I am in that the am of I am is the stressed syllable, so it's an I am. So an I am 
is an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. And when you say I am, it is an I am. These little things bring me joy, okay? And I'm just trying to share that joy with you. Get nerdy with me, it's okay. <laughs> Iambic pentameter is that da 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 Five stressed syllables. For my poem today, I'm going to be turning it into a Shakespearean sonnet. The structure of a Shakespearean sonnet is three quatrains. A quatrain is a four line part of a poem. So quatrain, three quatrains, that's 12 lines with the final couplet making up 14 lines. And the rhyme scheme is A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, E, F, E, F, G, G. The, Volta or the turn in the sonnet does happen after line eight, but also the final couplet provides some sort of resolution. Um, famous Shakespearean sonnets obviously include Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day or uh, My Mistress's Eyes Are Nothing Like the Sun or also just any of Shakespeare's sonnets. Definitely recommend giving them a read. Side note, Sir Patrick Stewart is reading a sonnet a day in lockdown over on his Instagram. So if you fancy getting into Shakespeare's sonnets, but you don't fancy reading them yourselves, go and follow the wholesome man that is Sir Patrick Stewart um, and let him read them to you. Which, really, why wouldn't you? Go do it. This was meant to be a brief introduction to sonnets, but I wrote my whole dissertation for my undergrad on sonnets, so... Sorry! The poem I'm editing today is called A Proposal and it's the poem I used to propose to my now fiance. It's never won me a slam, but it has won me a future husband. It's definitely long enough to be contracted into a sonnet. The thing is, is when you're turning a poem into a sonnet, you do need enough material there to do it. So the first thing I did is went through the existing poem as it was on my laptop and uh, highlighted the metre. So I put in bold the stressed syllables. This isn't exactly a science. I think that it really depends how you read it out. What that does is help me see the bits that really, really fit into being iambic pentameter and the bits that are less important for doing that. The next thing I did is have a look at the structure of the poem and I highlighted the important bits and where they might sit in the poem. So um, as you can see in the high tech graphic slash screenshot I made, I highlighted um, one chunk as being quatrain one, um, which was sort of the uh, introduction. Initially I wanted quatrain one to be the bit where I say I know we've been through some shit and I'm sure there's more to come but I realised actually in the context of the poem that actually doesn't lend itself to the Volta as much so I decided to ditch that bit um, and instead focused on the opening lines as the first quatrain like I've written another poem for you because this is what I want to do blah 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 uh, the second quatrain is all about the promises, so the I promise to make you cups of tea. After the second quatrain is the turn, so quatrain three for me is all about how the traditions and stuff like that, all the reasons why we shouldn't um, do it, all the reasons why society or expectations or whatever are saying why the woman shouldn't propose. And um, and then the final couplet is the, I don't care, I'm asking anyway. Like that's the final thing, like fuck all those reasons why we shouldn't, this, I'm gonna do it anyway. So that was my structure. Then what I did is I um, had th that document with all the edits and highlights and stuff like that on one side. Then I had a fresh document where I went through and typed it up. Um, I've edited the process down. It did not take me this um, fast to do. In fact, uh, the initial recording of typing up the sonnet took me about half an hour. I don't know if that seems like a long time or a short time to you guys. Um, it involved a lot of me um, tapping out the rhythm. I always go, but I have my fingers going, so I'm like, buh, 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 buh. Um, and then, 
yeah, so I had it all typed out. I knew the bits that I wanted to be in there. Um, and so it was just a matter of taking the, you know, the important lines that I really wanted to include and moving them across into the document, typing them up, and then making sure each line you know, fitted the rhythm. The bit that I personally find hardest about writing sonnets is writing in rhyme. Um, I don't enjoy writing in rhyme. If I do, it's always sort of internal rhymes. So one of the things that I was conscious about doing is one, finding rhymes, because I'm not very good at it. Um, so I used rhymezone.com that it has rhymes and also near rhymes, which are pretty cool. Um, so whenever I got a bit stuck or I didn't know what the next rhyme was going to be, um, I'd go on Rhyme Zone to double check um, to find alternatives. And the other thing to that I wanted to do is include a little sprinkling of enjambement. I probably could have used it a bit more, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but enjambement is when um, the clause runs over the line onto the next one. It has the effect of almost not hiding the rhyme, but making it less like, boom, rhyme at the end of the sentence. So it helps the poem flow through a bit more. It helps the rhymes like, mm, settle in. I probably would have liked to have used a bit more, but I was making, doing this for this video, so, you know. So my challenge to you, when you're doing this, when you're turning one of your poems into a sonnet, is to see if you can use enjambment, um, see if you can include the volta as well, and maybe, do you know what, chuck a couple of half rhymes in there, why not? I think the important thing to know about sonnets is to, especially if you're doing this for the first time, stick to the rules as strong as you can, because uh, I think it really helps you with your like your writing and your editing discipline. Um, but as you become more confident with the with the um, form, I think it's important to play around with the rules and the expectations that come with that. So, now I'm going to read you the final sonnet. I've written yet another poem for you because I feel like today needed one. I want to stare each day down and dance through all the good and bad that is to come. I promise to build you fires and make you cups of tea that you'll always forget to drink until we grow old and never grow up. If fun time flies, we'll be gone in a blink. It is known the man should ask the woman but I would argue that the time has passed for us to listen to any tradition and I'm tired of waiting to be asked. I know your mum might have a lot to say, but I don't care. I'm asking anyway. That's it for this week. Let me know how you get on turning your poems into sonnets and please if you do share them on the internet link them down below. I definitely want to check them out. How have you got on with writing sonnets? I hope it's been useful. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel. Um, I've just hit 300 subscribers which is really good fun. <laughs> um, my goal is to hit 500 before we leave lockdown, so if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe. I've got a lot more poetry videos coming at you. I've got a lot of like lockdown activities that I've been getting up to that I think you guys might enjoy, so make sure you subscribe and I will see you all next week. Thanks very much. Bye.